Kristen. And I'm Bethany. And this is Looking for the Middle, the Christian girl's guide to modern dating. We're here to help you date with confidence while honoring the Lord and to show you that your identity and contentment are in Christ. We're going to give you the tools that you need to date successfully and be set up well for success in a godly marriage. If you've ever felt like you didn't really belong with any of the extremes in dating today, well, you're not alone. Neither did we. And that's why we're here looking for the middle. Hello, friends. Welcome to another week. We are on episode nine, season seven, which is still mind blowing to me because I feel like we just started. But here we are. That is kind of weird. I'm glad you keep up with it with that. I'm like, I don't know what what number this is. Well, I just right on the top of the thing. I know on top of the page. That's the only reason I knew. Otherwise, I'm like, what week is it? (laughs) I mean, we're almost well, I don't know when this airs, but as we're recording it, we're not far from it being two months from Christmas. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy. We're in like mid October. What is it? Mid October? Also crazy is that some of us have started listening to Christmas music already. Yes, some of us have. And for once, it's not me. It's not Bethany. <laughs> Y'all, I was literally driving home the other night. And I mean, this was last week. So the first week of October. And I'm like, I'm really in the mood for some Christmas music. It was, it was kind of cool outside. I'm like, you know what? What the heck? There are no rules. I'm just going to do it. And so I was there listening. are kind of rules. I mean, there are. I mean, but the rule used to be nothing before Thanksgiving. I was a very, I was a purist. And then uh-huh. I've just thrown all that out the window. Obviously. And so now I'm like, oh, what the heck? It's October. It's fine. <laughs> so I think I'm willing the cold weather and like the holidays to get here. And so I'm just going to listen to the music in the meantime. Because that's the only thing I can you make happen. You also barely got your Christmas tree down in time for Valentine's Day. So that is true. Was that. That is true. I saw one of really stretching it. I mean, it we got is. October to February now. I know. Five months. <laughs> It's so great. It just really like, y'all, I love Christmas. It all started when we talked about candles, didn't it? It did. Yep. It did. And I, I went it. to go, I my fall pumpkin whatever candle I talked about yes. in a few episodes ago, it burned out yesterday. And I was like, oh, I will go get one of my Christmas candles. Well, that's already been moved to my grandparents' basement. Oh. And I didn't think about like, I'm going to want one of those. But then I think I, my thought process was I'll just buy a new one. Yeah. But obviously, Hobby, well, Hobby Lobby might actually, because I think their yeah. Christmas stuff is already out. It I is. might I could went, go. We, um, we did a birthday party for my grandfather a couple weeks ago. His 80th birthday. Oh, and, I know. <laughs> and so I was at Hobby Lobby getting decorations for, we did a classic car. Oh, so He fun. loves cars. And so it's like, we did this like, your classic, not old, was the there you go. The thing. There you go. I love so, it. I was there getting all that, and I got majorly distracted by all the Christmas, Christmas stuff. So, so you're judging me for the music, and force. you're getting I distracted didn't actually by buy anything, though. Well, that's true. That's fair. <laughs> I will go buy. It. I'm exactly. literally like, I have errands to run this afternoon. We're done recording. I'm like, like, I'm gonna oh. run to Hobby Lobby and give me a Christmas candle. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome that's to my too life. Funny. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the things we always talk about at the beginning. We have a newsletter. We have social media and we have some fun stuff planned for Christmas around here. So to break it down, newsletter comes out every Thursday. It's a mix of random links, articles, podcast episodes, books we're reading, things we like, all that sort of thing. It comes out every Thursday. Go to our website to sign up, lookingforthemiddle.com. There's a sign up for the newsletter button at the top. Or if you follow us on social media, uh, you can sign up through the link in our bio on Instagram, which is at LFTM underscore podcast. That's probably the best place to follow us on social media. We're a little more active over there. So if you haven't already, do those things. And then our fun announcement, which I think we first announced last week. I think so. Yeah. Is that we are bringing back the 12 days of couch cast, <laughs> which we did last year. So leading up to Christmas, whatever those dates end up being, Christmas Eve being the last day, we're going to have a couch cast every day. 12 days leading up to that. So send in your questions if you want to put them in the hopper to be drawn and answered. For those, we're going to start actually probably in the next month, I yeah. guess, probably getting those recorded. So yep. get your questions in and that will be coming to a podcast app near you. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Let's so do this. You just reminded me in the newsletter. I'm like, I didn't send that out yet. So I'm sending it out <laughs> <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> okay. So question of the day. Mm-hmm. Because as y'all know, you clicked on this or tapped on this episode. Click Is clicking even relevant anymore if you're not on your computer? P- like, I feel like our generation says click on everything, but it's tapping now. Well, yeah, I still say I clicked on it on my phone. Yeah. But 
Is that going to be a sign that we're old? Actually, probably. And I actually, I'm thinking about it. I think I probably use it interchangeably. I think okay. I say both because I'm like, oh, we'll just tap on such and such. Yeah. Or click on this. Or click on, yeah. I kind of just say, because I feel like I've got, I don't even really use a mouse with my computer anymore. I have a trackpad thing. Mm-hmm. And so that's not really clicking. That's true. You're tapping there too. So I think it, I don't know, maybe it's like weeding out, but yes, I definitely think it's a, an aging thing. You're like, oh, you're part of the 90s. You still say click on things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gracious. <laughs> okay. Well, y'all know that you tapped on this episode. You clicked on it. You selected it, whatever. And you we're, chose to be here. Yes. And we're talking about dating in the social media age and how the internet and social media have changed dating. This came from shocker a rabbit trail we went on a few episodes ago which a lot of our content comes from so in the spirit of that the question of the day is what is the first picture you ever posted on instagram i need a date okay i need how many likes it got if any oh, brother and Hold on, i'm scrolling what yeah bethany took a lot longer to scroll than i did she posts more than i do and then uh what the picture like describe the picture okay us. We can put these on oh, gracious. our Instagram, too. How embarrassing. Y'all can come help because mine got zero likes. So if y'all can go back and like my, po- my post from 10 years ago, that'd be great for my self-esteem. No, okay. So it was posted on, oh, this is fun, February 14th, oh, Valentine's 2012. Day. So apparently I was bored that day. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to remember 2012. That was nine years ago. So I was 25. Okay. Yeah, I was 19. Yeah. That was I the end of my freshman year of college. What was going on Valentine's Day when I was 25? Yeah, Bethany, what Not were you doing? Nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, zero likes. Um, I have almost 1,100 posts on Instagram. So Dang. it took me a while to get back to this one. It was, yeah, 2012. Uh, it is a picture from a football game at Clemson. And it's, I think those are Mel's hands. It's like, she's got her hands made into a heart, like around the logo down on the field, you know, like the big tiger paw, like we're a pie. So it's like her. And then I guess I'm stuck my phone up by her hands. And so took a picture of her, like hearting the logo, the logo artsy on the field. And he had a great, like, grungy filter oh, on yes. it. I told Kristen when we were going through, I was like, oh, I can tell I'm getting back to the beginning. They all have that, like, that old Instagram look yep. <laughs> when we, like, Nothing's bright and clear everything. And everything's dark. Because and- isn't that how it started? It was like, ooh, post your, make your photos look vintage. Yeah. Like, wasn't that the whole thing? I and think so, so. We, like, made them look grainy on purpose. <laughs> yeah. There's literally a, fo- a filter, I think, called, called grainy. grainy. There, and it was, yep. like, making it look, it was terrible. Which I haven't used an actual Instagram filter. No. And I don't even know how long. I just I go use, manually. Well, yeah, or I'll do, I've got presets on Photoshop now. Okay, that I'll yeah. Use, you can do that for free on your phone. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. What are the times? Well, okay. yours is way cooler than mine. What was yours? Mine was <laughs> April 3rd, 2012. So just a couple months later. And it was a picture of my youngest two siblings had sent me letters while I was away at college. Oh, wow. And I like laid them out on my unmade <laughs> dorm room bed. Okay. So I had my purple sheets and my orange pillowcase. And they're just like laid on my bed. And I've got one of those like rounded corner frames around the picture and a re- like the vignette or whatever it's is that how you say it where it's like the edges are darker yes, than the center yes, of yes, the picture yes. yeah no likes i did use a hashtag uh made my day because you know hashtags were everything then um but i feel like people now like People now know what hashtags are for. When yeah. people hashtagged when Instagram first started, at least people that I followed, uh-huh. it was just, what's the dumbest thing that I can put all into one word? Yeah. And, or like the undertone of what you're trying to say was in a hashtag. It wasn't yeah. like, oh, I'm going to post this so people find it. It's like, oh no, I'm just going to, this is the cool thing to do. Yeah. They definitely weren't used for like sorting or no. searching purposes no. way back in the Y'all, day. I've archived most of my old Instagram pictures and Wow. I need I need to go back and <laughs> relive the glory days because this is something. Oh, that's funny. But anyways, oh, that's fun. What a fun trip down memory yeah. lane. <laughs> I would we would challenge all of you to go back if you need a good laugh. Yes, go and back look and at tag your, us. Oh yeah. Yes, post it like share it to your story or something and tag us so we can see all of your 
first, first Instagram post. Oh my gosh, yes. too, because that will be that will be so fun. fun. And we need to know, yeah, how, if, if, we want to know that we're not alone in getting no likes. Yes, on our early posts. Yes, because I, I feel like likes were were very selective back yeah. at the beginning, and now yeah. it's like, oh, it, well, and you just saw it was chronological. It was chronological. It was chronological. Exactly, it was time. Did I do miss so that? I do too. Still, I wish that and Facebook. I like yeah. it being chronological, but I do too. Here we are. They don't really want to listen to me for whatever no, reason. They don't. So you know. Okay. Well, let's dive in. Okay. So now we've talked about social media, in just in general. Let's broaden it to the internet. Let's talk about the internet in general for a minute, and how has that changed? dating like just as a whole and it can be high level things what what comes to mind for you when you think of how the internet has changed dating i've got some fun numbers for us too once you get done yes i mean i don't know like my parents talk all the time like we didn't have the internet when we were dating and a lot of times it's in a negative context Uh which i get like because they talked on the phone every day or they saw each other right i would like to know if long distance relationships are more common now that the internet, you may, I don't know if you have a number on that or not, but uh, I feel, cause you never really hear a ton about people, our parents age dating long distance, unless they met close first mm-hmm. and then somebody had to move for something. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was easy for them. We just saw each other all the time. Like, yeah, well you probably lived 15 minutes from each other too, because exactly. you ran in the same circles. Cause that's how you met. Well, so, even around here, if you meet someone around here, the likelihood of them being within 10 or 15 minutes of you. Oh, it's so rare. I mean, I feel like anything less than an hour, hour and a half, maybe even is like, Oh, around the corner. Yeah. I mean, welcome to Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you can get somewhere in 30 minutes, you're like, Oh, you're right down the road. <laughs> exactly. It's like it's fine. Yeah, but so yeah, I know that's different for where we live. Like yeah. in other places, yeah. I'm like, oh my word, you yeah, have an hour. I'm like, yeah, and I don't think twice about it. Yeah, I think what's funny too is people who aren't from here, they talk about like distance in miles, and we talk about everything in, in minutes, minutes because it's like you could be. 10 miles from somewhere but it's going to take you 45 minutes to get there because the traffic's so bad so like you don't go by miles but Mm -hmm. side note if you're not from atlanta there's a fun fact for you but um, yeah and if i go somewhere someone's like oh that's about so and so miles away i'm like that is not helpful no how long is it going to take me to get there do i have to put it in my in my phone for me to figure this out but yeah i think it probably has yet normalized distance i think it's normalized distance i think just we're going to get into all of this, but just the whole progression of communication has completely changed. Yes. Um, and the different ways you talk and for how long you talk in each medium before you're actually dating. And yeah, um, I would say in a lot of ways it probably like has slowed progression down in yes. dating with someone you've never met before. Um, because there's also that, safety element yeah. that you have to consider too yeah um so yeah i think that's those are the first two things okay. that come to mind for me i think i think yeah it has sped up certain parts of it and slowed down others in a way yeah like that's a good point it speeds up talking to someone constantly but then at the same time it kind of slows down really getting to know someone i think sometimes yeah like i think in the previous generations they accomplished more with less communication time yeah that's um, true. So I think that's a, a big thing. And then it, I think it's also really, really done a number on commitment. Mm. Because I think that just, it, we're just talking about the internet in general has created this endless possibility mindset about everything. There's always another website. There's always another thing. Amazon has everything you could ever need. Like there's always. Except boyfriends. <laughs> If you're trying to buy a boyfriend on Amazon, stop. Beware. <laughs> Don't. Don't. Buyer beware. Do not do this. <laughs> um, I, so I think it has, that has crept into dating that just that consumeristic. There's always something better at the first sign of, uh, I don't like that about this person. Is it a breakup worthy red flag? Not really, but it's not my preference. And there's 20 million other people waiting for me to swipe on them. So working through problems has become, 
not really not even problems just working through normal old differences yeah has kind of gone by the wayside i think a lot um but yeah so you want some some stats yes okay, okay, so this is stats. from broadbandsearch.net uh online dating statistics for 2020 so this is recent Ooh, okay and so this is there are currently so currently to last year 30.4 million people using online dating services 30 million holy crap and 30 percent of all u.s adults have used an online dating app or site a third uh, mm, i'm yeah uh, uh, yeah <laughs> so it's shocking to me on top of that get this there are more than eight thousand dating sites around the world wow eight thousand okay and most daters spend an average of 243 dollars per year on online dating services dang yeah. so you got 30 million people spending two what's that man? well no hold on i got it it's the next oh, step. okay okay the online dating industry earns around 1.9 billion dollars per year so it's a multi-billion billion, with a b b good yes night. now so 20 percent of current committed relationships began online which honestly is lower i started to say for well, it to be a third of the adults in that many people well it's that's not necessarily true. but so one in five yeah i wow. kind of expected that to be higher i did being too honest. i did too so now here's the stat that surprised me the most Ooh, okay. Are you ready for this? Yes. I No, but yes. <laughs> 62% of online dating users are men. That's a lie. I, I don't know. What? Yeah. I really, I don't know that I believe 62%? that one. 62%? That's what it says. Are men? Mm-hmm. That is fascinating. Sorry, y'all. I'm like, <laughs> y'all can't see me thinking. <laughs> um, wow. I didn't know any of this before. Like, I'm not. This is this is genuine shock. Yeah. This is not like, Which, oh, Kristen acts surprised when Bethany reads these stats. Like, I really did not know this. I'm wondering if that's just 62 percent of the profiles out there. I feel like when girls get off of an app or off of a site, they're probably more likely to actually delete actually it. Actually, delete it. I feel like that, maybe that plays into it. If it's we're just talking about number of profiles out there, because I know 62%. I delete mine. 62 percent. Um, almost two thirds are men, which that is, is a little depressing. Yeah, when it comes to the whole odds should be in your favor thing, doesn't feel true at all. Not at all. Which takes me back to it. it's a one point nine billion dollar a year industry. Yeah, they're in a weird way, <laughs> like they they want you to keep paying them money, right? Like, Ooh, so is it all a scam? <laughs> Are we going into... I'm not going to be cynical. Because <laughs> I've paid them my $243 a year multiple times <laughs> in years oh past. Gosh. Like, I totally have. So, but but they have an interest at some level in you not succeeding. Mm. Yeah. Just saying. Oh, that's messed up. Right? It's like, we've created this for you to find love, but we hope you don't, so we still make money. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's like a Disney villain. Like they, let me, they need just they need a certain number of people to, to succeed to not to continue making money off of the ones that don't. Oh, that is oh my <laughs> gosh, y'all! I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all, but my brain is is so those twenty percent of running. people who have started their relationships. Like, did they really? Yeah. Oh man, her wheels are turning now, guys. Oh, that's fascinating. Wow. I need to like go get off here and process all of this or something. Oh my goodness. I can't just keep saying wow over and over again, but that's literally what's going through my brain. Okay. We'll give Kristen another second or two to process. Yes. This is when I wish a podcast was a little more visual so y'all could see the look on my face. Wow. That kind of makes me mad of like, there are all these people and you're making all this money and still you're only at a one in five like well i think i think there's some committed relationships like current committed relationships which is different than oh i've been dating this guy for a few weeks like that's true that's true that's, that's I, a good I think point that, i think that is it's not 20 percent of people meet someone it's a committed relationship that's their true. stat so i think i think it's a little i would is there a stat account. on like how many married couples met online 
Is that a stat, or is it just the committee? It doesn't have it right here. I'm sure okay. we could find it, but okay, we don't have time right this moment. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that is not all what I expected. I expected you to be like, oh, one in you know three couples met online. Yeah, and interesting. And I did not expect it to make over a billion dollars a year. Almost two in one point nine. Yeah. Wow. All right. So. Take that for what you will. <laughs> Spin in circles. Pause this if you need to to process <laughs> like I'm doing at the moment. But so that in mind, and then thinking about how the internet has changed dating, how social media has changed dating, we wanted to kind of go through, okay, what are some pros and cons? Yes. of Because, you know, there are pros like there are some things about social media that i'm like wow i wish i didn't have to deal with this sure dating but there are some things i'm like man my parents really missed out that they didn't have this well and a lot of them are kind of like two sides of the same coin like you're walking this line of when you use it well it's helpful and when you don't it's not on the same things almost so a lot of these are like we're not going to go and parallel them all but you'll see like it's kind of like, oh, well, they said this was a pro, too. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. it's kind of like, okay, how how are you going to use it? Yeah, that's so. true. So, we'll start with the pros. We'll be positive. Good news first. Yes, good news first. <laughs> and then we'll talk about the cons and be cynical at the end, like we always do. There we go. It'll be great. All right. So, pro number one of dating with the internet and social media is the added safety component, which we... Yeah, go with us for a second. <laughs> yes. So obviously, you know, to imply that there's a safety component means that there's some sort of danger, which I <laughs> realize could be a con. However, like, particularly as a girl, it's just nice to be able, because again, the likelihood of you meeting somebody yeah, that's, I'm not saying it's not impossible, but wait, huh? it's not possible. <laughs> not impossible. I'm not it's saying not, it's not, not impossible. impossible. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, wow i am this caffeine is hitting me in a different way today um but when you know so much of either we're meeting people through dating apps through social media we're you know being friends of a friend getting suggested Uh on your facebook or whatever you get to kind of do your research and you know like is this person real yeah yeah does their walk social media back up their talk on a dating app kind yeah. of like you can yeah i i i do like to at least see if i can find if I, especially if it's just like some random guy from an app or mm-hmm. a site figure out okay is he on social media mm-hmm. does his does his work seem to be what he says it is mm-hmm. does he see like does this seem to match up at a high level to who he says he is and then leave it at that yeah and there is definitely a reassurance to that that okay this guy is legit. <laughs> well, and you can even do that with people you do meet in person for the oh, first for time. Sure. Like I, I've done that too, where I'll meet him. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go home. And he said this and this, <laughs> and let me go check and see. Like, you know, I'll, I'll do a little, you know, call it stalking. If you want to research, whatever. Um, <laughs> what do you have to say to make yourself feel better. Exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's just a good way to get some peace of mind. Yeah. When you're kind of navigating that. Another pro is that you get an added layer of communication. So this is the one I always go back to. My parents are like, all we could do is see each other and talk on the phone. I'm like, yeah, well, I can, like, you know, we can text <laughs> like and woof. we can face <laughs> from the yeah. office. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like 14 different <laughs> types of communication all at once. Um, I can, you know, I can text him. I can FaceTime him. Like, my mom says all the time, like, the fact you that y'all track have, him? Yep. Yeah, yeah that too rolling my eyes you know i oh i have i told you i figured out a way around y'all stalking tracking me (laughs) have i figured did i tell you this i figured it out pretty soon christmas shopping is going to start and there ain't none of y'all going to be knowing where i am all the time so i'm turning it off okay so enjoy it while it lasts that's fair because i'm probably going to forget to turn it back on when i'm done that's fine that's valid (laughs) really the only time i check it is when When i'm coming you're when you're coming here and i'm still laying in bed i'm like how much longer do i have before i have to get up and get ready for her to get here you know like a road that's like oh no once you pass she's already she's passing post road i've gotta go i've gotta go (laughs) that's hilarious oh gosh but yeah there's there's just more ways to communicate and i think it particularly if um there's distance or your schedules are messed up like 
FaceTime is just revolutionary, I think. And the I fact... Will, yes, I do like FaceTime. Yeah, and so it just gives you that added. And I think because, like, our parents... I mean, they went to work all day, and then they talked on the phone at night, but, like, you had no idea. Right. What time are they going to get home? Are they running late? When like, do you want to talk? When you do you want to call talk? them to ask them when they yeah, want to talk on the phone? exactly. Like, or, like, you seem like, okay, I'll call you tomorrow at this time, and then yeah. you're sitting there waiting by your landline <laughs> until, like, nobody else pick up the phone. <laughs> yes. And so it's just, oh, wow. it's so much easier now. And I think that's probably my favorite one of my two favorite pros probably that we're going to talk about is just we have so much more opportunity yeah to talk to each other yep and i think one thing that actually helps do too another pro in this we kind of talked about long distance relationships and i think they are more prevalent i mean i know i when i've talked to guys before and it's been long distance and we've talked about like okay you know kind of that beginning like so what are your thoughts on long distance like make sure you really want to do this or whatever. And that's one thing I always say is like, it's easier to date long distance now than it ever has been. Absolutely. Because the internet and then social media, even specifically, it kind of bridges that distance gap. Sometimes it gives you that face to face interaction with someone that you never would have been able to have otherwise. Um, Not only face to face, but instant. Like if you think too far back, like you're, not calling long distance mm-hmm. was it nights and weekends i don't remember how all that worked. yeah <laughs> yeah a little before my it was time. after nine and on the weekends right and so or you're writing someone a letter which uh, which yes i know uh, yes now from a timing standpoint i can say it's romantic but it would drive me up the wall be like was, how long, if i that was my only means of communication exactly. i had to wait that long would be awful it's romantic now because it's like one of 12 ways you talk to someone exactly it's more of a symbolic gesture at this point you yes know? yes um but yes i do think it, it definitely bridges that gap to where even if it's just like oh you're chatting on instagram or you're commenting on this or you're sending something on facebook oh i thought of you when i saw this and like haha and you kind of chat about it like in social media specifically it's just one way to kind of stay on each other's minds throughout yeah. the day yeah exactly Another pro, and man, this makes me sound like a stalker that all of mine are like, oh, here are ways you can go find things out about people without them realizing it. Um, But social media allows you to learn enough about someone for you to start conversations with them more easily, whether you're talking to them on a dating app, whether you met them once at a party and you see them again, whether you, you know. Maybe they followed you on Instagram and you're wanting to slide into their DMs. I don't know. But like it gives you some context Uh of, oh, wow, he goes, I don't know. He likes this sports team. Yes. He's a Clemson fan. He, you know, goes hiking all the time. If that's your thing. (laughs) He Um, has a dog. Yes. Oh, dogs are so easy to talk about. I'm like, oh my gosh, your puppy's so cute. (laughs) You know, it just, it gives you material Mm -hmm. and I, this is so helpful too when like you've met somebody once you follow each other so you're away it's not like you know maybe be a little careful with this if you're not like if he's public and you're not actually following him and you go back and find out oh he went you know mountain biking three weeks ago you're like how was your trip like that's creepy don't, yeah, do, don't that. do that but if you follow each other he's aware that you're looking at what he posts and then the next time you see him like oh yeah hey i saw this like How'd that go? Or did yeah. you have fun doing this? Or, oh, did you watch the game on Saturday? Whatever. Well, it, it, oh. No, I was just saying, it just makes it easier yeah. on you and takes the pressure off of you trying to figure out what do I need to go? I want to talk to this guy. I want to say something to him, but yeah. I don't want to be random or <laughs> weird or awkward. Yeah. So it's like a Kickstarter. Yes. And you mentioned sliding into DMs a second ago. So I wanted to say one thing too with that of like, so let's say you, maybe this is like a, friend of a friend situation you kind of know each other you met that one time at a party and you're wanting to follow him or you want to message him or whatever remember your first message is going to go to his message requests yeah folder thing yep i don't think guys check as much as we do no nope. so send the message and follow him at the same time because that follow notification will pop up in his regular like he'll see that and i think it will 
in my experience guys are more likely to then see the message request if this new person has followed them yeah to be kind of looking for that than if you just go with the message well and so. sometimes not all the time i don't know what the algorithm is for this but if you follow them first and then message them sometimes the message does go through okay i don't know why that's weird sometimes yeah because i've had it where people will message me after they just followed me and okay. it won't it'll come straight to my inbox not all the time interesting i don't know why because i yeah as i say i have ones where i know it's the opposite too, yeah where i know they're following and then it goes to them that yeah it's weird i don't know it's weird so if you want to up your chances definitely follow follow too. them first and then yeah send the message but and if um, you feel weird about that remember you're sliding into their dms yeah. like it's more up on the up and up to follow them too I that's think. true <laughs> it's, it's probably a little because you can always unfollow them yes if it if it goes south like it's not a big deal no okay so then kind of taking that to the next level okay it's easier to start a conversation second step to that is it then makes flirting a little bit easier um whether it's you know who their sports team was and they lost last week so you can give them a hard time or whatever it kind of gives you a little something to base your flirting off of especially if you're seeing this person in person person in person yes (laughs) picture in picture yes exactly (laughs) and hey any any added little helping bits i can get when yeah. i'm flirting i will take 100 percent. but just walk that line between oh i'm paying attention to you and i'm stalking you online yes walk that line yes i would suggest not if you're gonna bring up something he's posted about uh-huh. maybe only like bring up something based on his last like two or three posts like one, oh make sure it's recent yeah for sure nothing like even like technically you can see what his first six when you look at his profile six or nine i don't know um yeah keep it to that first page. keep it to the first without you having to scroll now you um, can't have scrolled just don't mention those yes yeah, so, yeah, yeah oh absolutely you can you can scroll he doesn't just need to know that you've been scrolling yeah. there's a difference we gotta be well, sneaky and uh, pay attention to that you see the first six or nine or whatever but if he doesn't post very much and number six is from 2017 because he doesn't really post all that much make keep it to that first page but make sure it's yeah. recent too yeah because he'll be like wait what are you talking about oh that picture i posted four years ago oh yeah i totally forgot about that <laughs> awkward yes yes so details ladies <laughs> details they are your friend absolutely they are your friend all right the last pro before we move on to our cynicism um <laughs> everybody's favorite part uh the last pro to dating with social media is that it's a great way to reconnect with people now i am not saying reconnect with your ex okay we did a whole episode on whether or not no whether or not you should date i think it was a couch cast whether or not you should date your ex oh hold on i'm gonna be christened we'll put it in the newsletter thank you (laughs) read my mind (laughs) um that one and i wanted to do the flirting ones we did a couple episodes on flirting okay we'll put in the newsletter too since we just talked about flirting but um if there's somebody that like maybe you used to know or like hang out with and now you're not really in the same circles anymore, but they come up and they're like, oh, so-and-so's yeah. cute. Look or, what they're yeah, the friend to. you might know. Yeah. I'm mean, like, oh, I wonder. And social media is great. I'm like, oh, let me just. And you can start slow, you know, like like their pictures yeah. when they post them. Maybe, you know, after a while you comment on one of them. And then mm-hmm. if you, you know, get up the guts and want to slide into their DMs, that's fine. You ca- it's less out of nowhere. Yeah. If you do it like that. That's true. You can you can do the slow build. Um, <laughs> slow burn, whatever it's called. <laughs> but it is. It's nice to, you know, because maybe somebody that wasn't really on your radar a few years ago. Maybe all of a sudden you're like, oh, shoot. Okay. Maybe that's somebody I could see myself being interested in. And you never know. So use it. Use that for what you will. Yes. But I agree. It's nice. I mean, they're it, they're called, it used to be called like social networking. Like mm-hmm. it was a social network and it is a network of people, whether on your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever. And the the people that we come across we don't lose touch with the way that our parents did we may not talk yeah. to them but we're still very aware of what's going on like lauren and i were talking the other day about 
Lauren is my roommate if you're new here. Um, we were talking about how class reunions are so unnecessary now. Because yes. like our parents are like, oh, yeah, we got our class reunion because I have no idea what people are doing. It's like, oh, I'm oh, very aware wow. of what yeah. everybody who I'm friends with on social media that graduated with me. I know where they live, what they do for work because they post about it. Yeah. I don't need to show up to some like awkward event to be like, so how's your life been the last decade? Like I'm, if I want to know something, I can find it out uh-huh. and how oh, that's, that's just weird. become so irrelevant. And so a lot of people our age don't want to do them anymore. Huh. Like Lauren was her class president. She's like, I'm not doing it. Really? Yeah. Oh, so wow. she, uh, I think one of the other people on the student council or whatever, they're going to, do a little something but she was like i'm not i'm not doing this <laughs> um but yeah it just people don't filter out of our lives the same way yeah. and so you never know like who might circle back or who you might want to circle back to yes so very there's a pro there is that yeah that is okay are we gonna on that note yes <laughs> let's talk about the the crappy part <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm always up for talking about the crappy part. Okay, so first con of dating in this internet social media age is social media, in a way, circumvents the getting to know you process a little. Because so much information is just out there, you you just know stuff about someone that you didn't get to know from them, so you feel like you know them better than you actually do. Which is a weird place to be because then it makes it awkward. Because you know you shouldn't know this stuff, but you do. And so you... (laughs) It's just weird. (laughs) Yeah, it is. And one thing I will say of like... I'm not justifying if somebody else stalks you on your social media if they get creepy. Like, I'm not justifying that at all. However, keep in mind... If you don't... If you're not comfortable with people that you don't know, knowing things about you that you then don't post about them. Mm. I would just keep that because I think sometimes like, well, how did he know that? I'm like, uh-huh. you posted about it. And I think that we need to be if you and obviously you can have privacy settings and whatever. And that's great. I'm not yeah. saying you shouldn't. Do, I'm all for privacy settings. Um, but keep in mind, if it's out there, it's available. Yeah. And so you know and same goes for him he can't really again don't be creepy but he can't get mad if you find things out because he posted about him because it's all all out out there there. yeah it's all out there but i do think it is kind of because there is something really fun about like getting to know all these things about somebody and asking him questions and like use it as a springboard don't use it to get to know the person like yeah yeah you're not you know creating a dossier about them like you know you don't work for the cia no. no matter what you think yes i mean unless you do then then but anyway. yeah good for you um <laughs> what kind of security clearance do you have because that would be fun um <laughs> yeah. but yeah i think don't I, and i speaking from experience i really had to and bethany was really helpful in reminding me of this of i had to kind of check myself and how much because i when I like somebody, I'm like, okay, I want to know as much as I possibly can. Uh-huh. But it's so much more fun when I'm getting to know as much as I possibly can by talking to that, person, that person. Not, oh yeah, he's telling me the story and like, this would be so much more fun if this were the first time I knew about it. But I've already <laughs> I, like watched the video of this on Instagram. And exactly. it's like, oh, well, this isn't nearly as fun as hearing him talk about it. But I already know yeah. what happens. And so getting to, you know, getting to know the person from the person is yep. going to be so much more fun and enjoyable and exciting so don't ruin that because you're just trying to gather information mm-hmm. as quickly as possible you'll learn if you end up dating the guy you'll learn it you've all eventually yeah. you've got plenty of time so yeah i think we use it as a way to try to make something happen because it's like okay well if i know all the stuff about him and then i can like tailor my interests to that like you can kind of like try to force something whether it's good bad or different instead of just saying okay i'm gonna let this happen god is still in control guys like regardless and i think that's something i've kind of gotten to a place of the last few years of like when i'm talking to someone and i'm like should i say this or should i not or i don't know like i you know is this weird about me or is it not like just different things i'm like you know what if this is the guy i'm supposed to be with it's not gonna matter like he'll appreciate whatever this quirk or thing is and then if it's not the guy, 
it's also not going to matter. And why do I want to make it work if he's not who I'm supposed to be with? Yeah, exactly. And just say, you know what? I'm going to be me. And and I don't mean it in the way of like, when he can just get over it because I'm not changing anything. I'm just saying, I'm going to be who I am, yeah. like the things that I like, and trust the Lord. Yeah. So. And it sounds... That's like the easiest and toughest thing all yeah. at the same time. Because on one hand, it takes off so much pressure. But then at the same time, you're like, every time I'm trying to fight for control or fight to make something happen, it's like, uh, nope, this is not up to me. Yep. Like, I can do my part, but it's not ultimately not up to me. Yep. Um, another con of, moving right along here, of <laughs> dating with social media is it's really tempting to be someone you're not yeah. because you can curate your content a certain way so as you know so far we've only talked about like what's he posting what are you learning about him it's like he's learning about you or you know you're presenting a persona Uh on your social media even if there's not a guy in the picture yeah or if there is you're presenting the the things that you because you've stalked him you know he's gonna like so you're posting those things to get his attention and Oh, I've done that. More, I have too. More than once. Yes. Yeah. Where I'll post it and I'm like, I'm trying to get this guy to like either respond to my story or like like yep. a picture. And so I'm like, okay, well, I know this would be something that he would like. So this is what I'm going to post. Or he would appreciate this caption. So this is what I'm going to say. Uh-huh. And then either he does like it and they're like, oh, well, that was it. That was very short lived <laughs> yeah. gratification. Or he doesn't and you're even more disappointed. And so then you're like, okay, well, what did I do wrong? Or what, what do I have to do better, different next time? And it's like, it's your social media. Like, post what you want to post. Yeah. Or if you don't want to post, don't post. Like, don't, you know, just all of a sudden be like, oh, I'm going to post 14 things this week trying to see how many he'll like or see how many he'll comment on yeah. or see how many times he'll are going through even i'm so terrible at this and like making sure he watched all my stories oh wow yeah Which, that's exhausting <laughs> yes. um i don't post enough stories yeah for, yeah i never really thought about that yeah i've definitely done that to, like, before scroll through i mean yeah. i post one for and then i'm like oh these people looked at it and right. i don't have yeah more yeah oh, that yeah. would be exhausting. it is it's very exhausting because you're going and usually they're in the same general place in the list so you can yes. kind of like okay this is where it was before but don't you know run yourself into the ground yeah because you're or again just don't be somebody you're not like you want a guy to like you for who you are uh-huh. and just like we say to present when you're you know you're on an online dating site to present an accurate picture of yourself yeah visually the way you describe yourself all that your social media is the same it should do the way same thing. and he shouldn't be surprised or confused or wondering if he's out with the right girl when he yeah. meets you yeah, because of yeah, yeah because of who you posted you know or presented yourself to be on social media yeah. it should be genuine it should conf- when you meet someone in person it should confirm everything they know about you from your online presence really. yeah exactly yeah. exactly if it doesn't then that that's a concern for him or for yeah. you so just keep that in mind i think that's a yeah a really good thing to point out okay so then talking about communication um one thing that i think is the negative about the social media age is that it can like we were talking about earlier you know we talked about it's an added layer of communication well at the same time i think it can distract from quote unquote real communication i'm not saying it's not real but i'm meaning voice to voice in person like you can actually hear the person whether it's on the phone whether it's in person over facetime even you can get stuck in just a little like vacuum of scrolling social media seeing what they've posted seeing what they talked about and then just like maybe chatting over facebook or chatting over instagram or whatever and it can become like we were talking about it, you accomplish less with more communication like are you really making progress and getting to know this person or are you just kind of chit-chatting endlessly not really going anywhere and i think it's easy to fall into that with social media absolutely because it's not verbal right and it's not there are no mannerisms there are no nonverbal cues because well, what is it can, 70% of communication is nonverbal oh yeah and you can think about like no i don't want to say that or i'm going to you know mm. put a ha ha here an lol there or i'm going to use this emoji and i'm going to use that emoji and oh no no i'm going to backspace and redo this and redo that like it's 
it's not that it's not genuine, but it's curated. Yeah, curated. It really, yeah. Even in just chatting like that, it still is. Yeah. So I think you should have to be careful and not rely on that as your primary source of anything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Another thing I think you need to be careful of when you're, you know, considering how social media affects your dating experience, um, <laughs> you really only get a partial picture of who somebody is, even if they're accurately presenting themselves on social media. Yeah. So we were talking, you know, just talking about how like it's important that who you are on social media is who you are in person. Even if that's accurate, you know, people say all the time, social media is a highlight reel. Yes. It is. And so you're only getting the really the great moments, the big moments, the fun things. And that's okay. And that's fine. Yeah. But I mean, it wasn't, I think I have one or two pictures on my social media of me without makeup. And one of them was literally like the difference when I (laughs) filter myself and when I don't, but until then, like nobody saw Kristen without makeup and five day unwashed hair. Like you don't (laughs) see that on my social media. That's very intentional. And so, but if you start dating me long Mm -hmm. enough, you're going to see that side of me. And so, you know, you go, you can go in and yes, you can have an accurate representation of someone, but don't assume that that's all there is or that they're, you know, that pretty and put together all the time because real life the entirety of real life is never going to be represented accurately no. on social media. And so just keep that in mind as you're getting to know somebody, you're learning about somebody. It's like, Hey, they seem really great. And what they post online may be really great, Yeah, but there's more to them than that. And, and you hope for that. Like you, I would hope <laughs> want yeah. somebody to think like, Oh, there's more to her than what she puts on her social media. And cause even, you don't know too how like private somebody is about certain things you know there's Mm -hmm. um i was listening to i guess it's a book by emily p freeman and she talked about the the next right thing highly recommend i'll put that in the newsletter that's a i just listened to it for the second time and oh my gracious it's so good (laughs) but she was talking about she's like i'm a writer And I have a social media presence. So I balance like sharing my life on the Mm -hmm. internet, but I'm also a very private person and you don't know who you're talking to. Like, yeah, there may, they may post a lot. Mm -hmm. They may do like even looking at Bethany's social media, like Bethany's social media is beautiful. (laughs) Oh, that's so nice of you. It is. And her pictures are amazing. But like, you know, most of her pictures are not of people. She's not telling you like, Hey, I woke up and had this really awful day this morning, (laughs) you know? And she's like, it's very, she's got her, you know. My niche. Her niche. It's my shit, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there's so much more to Bethany than just her photography. Is that a really important part of her life? Absolutely. Is she really great at it? Yes. Is that all she does? No. And so you can't just judge or make assumptions about somebody based off of that. There could be more. There probably is more. I think we're just saying about that. How does it go? Don't judge a book something by its cover yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that one. one that's a good one always <laughs> think, a classic I think i've heard that somewhere yeah. before i don't know if you guys you have know. heard that like always a classic <laughs> but yeah it's the same thing so don't you know and one other thing i just thought of while we're on here and then we can move on again y'all when we <laughs> don't we just did the pros and cons list with no sub points and i go off the rails on these episodes because yeah. i'm like oh all these little like <laughs> thoughts but one of my This is one of my favorite stories to tell, but my friend, Noelle, who I met, we worked together Mm, for a couple years, when I had the worst attitude about her coming to work with me because I had just gotten her own office. I had just gotten my own office and I was so excited. And my boss comes in, he's like, we're getting another intern and you're going to have to share an office. I'm like, you're going to be freaking kidding me. (laughs) Um, I was such a butt about it. But I went, they told me her name. I met her when she came and interviewed and I'm like, there is no way me and this girl are going to be friends. I got on her social media. Y'all, she was like, she longboarded. She had this massive tattoo on her right arm. She was a cheerleader in high school she was like super hipster and like really trendy and I'm like I'm the like private school like basketball player I was homeschooled for a while I don't at that time I was still terrified of getting a tattoo um and I was like I'm not hipster at all like this is just not my people like I'm sorry and so 
we end up you know sharing our office the first couple of days i was super rude to her because i was trying to prove a point and then by day three i don't think we worked at all that day <laughs> so just talked i ended up being at her wedding like we're you know we still talk on social media she lives you know in south carolina now but like we're still really good friends and if i had solely judged her based on her social media I would assume we don't have anything in common. There's no way. And so yeah. you may even like on the flip side, you may meet a guy and we keep going back to at a party. So let's say you meet this guy at a party. <laughs> he seems really cool. We don't go, we to, don't go to parties. parties just so y'all no. know. Our parties consist of like eight people playing games and <laughs> eating junk food. And we knew all of them to start with. Yes. And we know everyone. The last time I met a guy at a party was probably like junior year of high yeah, school. Yeah, I was say high school. Um, which even then, I'm like, I knew everybody at those two because I went to a small school. Um, we'll work on our examples before next week. Yes. Guys. We're hoping y'all have more exciting lives than we do, yes. basically. But let's say you meet this guy at a party and he seems really cool and y'all kind of hit it off and then you go home and you follow him on Instagram and you're like, oh, like this is not like I don't think we would get along. Like, we don't seem like we have anything. Else. Don't, like, sell him short or write him yeah. off just because of his social media. Because, again, it's a partial picture. So, I think yeah. that can go both ways. So, just keep that in mind. Yes, it can. And then, on the flip side, don't sweep major red flags under the rug. Mm. Because, well, it was just social media. No, no. Be smart. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. Okay, um... So then, and this one's kind of a duh moment. The next con is that a lot of social media and the internet in general creates major information overload. It is too much to handle. It's more than you were supposed to know about people in general. We were never meant to be connected to this many people. No. Like, it just, it's not how we were created. And so I think we, it, it's an overwhelming thing. And so we, ha- we run into this information overload and so just be careful with that don't there's enough of that already don't add to it like don't heap it on yourself because you're trying to figure out everything there is to know about this guy it will happen in time if it's meant to and you don't need to put that burden on yourself if it's not meant to like it's unnecessary yeah exactly okay a couple more this one I feel like is just a straightforward thing because we all know how I feel about yes. the talking phase of relationships now. If you've been listening a while, you're like, oh, Kristen, yes. stay off the soapbox. <laughs> yes. uh, but I think, no, I think I know, we know social media yes. has contributed drastically to talking being its own phase of a relationship because you can, you know, DM somebody and text somebody and, you know. Well, yeah. I think there was a shift to. And I can't prove this. This is just in my own yeah. observation of things. I think there was a shift in that the prevalence of that when online dating went from strictly like s- sites to apps. Oh, absolutely. I think it ramped it up. A That's big, a great point. A big part there too. Because then these apps are basically just like texting someone. And so like immediately there's no like getting to know you and we're making this progression through a dating relationship just in an unconventional way. It's everyone's like oh i don't want a pen pal but that's what everyone does on these apps is you just chat and then it never goes anywhere so i think that is another big benchmark in the ramping up of that yeah absolutely and then last one here um and this is a con because it's also just unnecessary in a very big black hole (laughs) that sucks you in but social media gives you a window into the past dating choices of the guy you're interested in more than anything else ever has and that can be really really dangerous Kristen, tell us more about that yeah so basically (laughs) this means you'll end up stalking their exes on social media not just them which can i just tell y'all how many times i've done this and i have regretted it every single time because she's doing better i am doing better she has not done this in a while no i haven't i haven't yeah, I haven't. <laughs> Sitting here thinking. You um, haven't? No, I haven't. Oh, yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> but y'all, it is we already have enough issues with comparison as women. You don't need to fuel the fire. And, no. and one thing to remember. If this guy is interested in you, he's interested in you. Yes. And he is no longer with this person. There is a reason for that. Even <laughs> if he was not the one to end it, he's still not with her anymore. And flipping, you know, to the other side of things, like, I ha- I mean, I have a type. 
let's be honest okay yes. i do have a type I do too i mean yes we have we types. both <laughs> i mean i'll show kristen a picture and she's like oh 100 percent, totally your type but or, even oh, that's different <laughs> yeah but even in that like none of my like none of the guys i've dated actually look very similar to each other like they all fit the type but it's not yeah. like you know but seriously like they let me not that's not gonna flow <laughs> And so, even though I have a type, like, it's, and even the type is all, it's typically just the way they look. It's not even, I mean, I have preferences of what I would like your personality to be yeah. like, but I, again, am not with my exes for a reason. I'm interested in this guy. And so, you know, it's just as much as you're tempted to of like oh what was she like and am i am i prettier than her am i this am i that is she this am i gonna immediately feel insecure because i feel like she was dropped dead gorgeous and i don't feel that way about myself like no good can come from you going down that rabbit hole or well, black hole as bethany called it yes well and as i think of like i look back on my past dating choices mm-hmm. i would be offended if someone like looked back through that and then was trying to make judgments or decisions about me based on that, I'd be like, excuse me. I didn't always make the best decisions. Okay. That's true. But I learned like you learn from that. So I, I say I would be offended. I think that's a strong word. I wouldn't be offended probably, but it would be like, okay, hold up. That's That's, that's not fair. Yeah. And so I try to like, think about it from that perspective. I wouldn't appreciate someone making judgments decisions assumptions about me based off of that especially based off of social media yeah so i think we we justify it because oh well we're girls and we want to know and this is what we do oh it's just what we do it's just how we are yeah no that doesn't make it okay no. so i think have some self-control and you you as someone who is reformed from doing this would agree with what i'm saying it's not fair absolutely to you or him it no. makes you know and so just exercise that self-control just because the, it kind of goes back to that information overload thing just because the information is there doesn't mean you have to know it yeah well and with a lot of things <laughs> yeah and even going back to you know you want to learn things from the guy Yes. And so if he, you know, you'll get to a point, if you get serious enough with a guy, you'll talk about your past dating history mm-hmm. with each other. And it's going to be a lot better for you to figure that out from him, hear his experience, what actually happened, yeah. than you making assumptions based on what you've seen on social media or what she posted or what he posted mm-hmm. or what they were tagged in together or whatever. Like you, you don't know based off of a bunch of pictures what went down in that relationship and so you want to learn that from him not from your own research yes because a lot of just practicality or practically speaking um your research is going to go on her facebook profile Mm -hmm. and girls are more prone to put things out there so you're going to see her side of what you can see of what happened yeah and then let's be real you're not going to Say, hey, oh, you know what I did earlier? I was on Susie Q's Facebook and I was reading all about how y'all's relationship went down. You know, tell me your side. You're not going to go say that to him. And so you're making assumptions and making, you know, filling in those holes based on her side of what happened, which I'm sure is accurate from her perspective. Right. But there's always, you know, and you're dating this guy. You don't, you're not dating her. Like, yeah. who cares? Not who cares, but who cares yeah. for all intents and purposes what her side of it was. Yeah. Get the truth. Get the story from his side and go with that. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> it's just, and the last thing I'll say, if you are one that struggles with this, talk to a friend about it. And yeah. just like we talk about, you know, if you're tempted to text your ex and you text your best friend instead, mm-hmm. if you're tempted to go stop, stop, <gasps> stalk your current boyfriend interest, maybe soon to be boyfriend's ex-girlfriend, <laughs> text your best friend, be like, hey, yeah. I'm really wanting to do this. And then let them talk you out of it and listen to them. Yes. Um, don't just do it and then be like oh yeah I'm not going to do it meanwhile you got them on speakerphone yep. and you're going through her Instagram like 
have that accountability. Don't date in a bubble and, you know, do what you need to do to make sure you, if you need help in that area, which I have had to do, self-proclaimed, I'm very (laughs) aware that this was a problem for me. And, you know, my friends, Bethany specifically, have really helped me with this. So there you go. But that wraps up our pros and cons of dating in the social media age. And I'm sure there's more. Oh, on absolutely. Both sides. These are just the ones we came up with. Yes. It could be, as we were saying, the possibilities are endless when it yes. comes to the internet. It's <laughs> so true. But we, you know, all of this to say, we get the cons, but don't forget about the pros. Yeah. And just be wise in how you, social media and the internet can be your friend. Absolutely. But they can also be your foe. So you want to make yeah. sure you're on the, you know, you're using them. Walk that line. Yeah. Walk the line and use them in wisdom and in helpful ways and as springboards, not as the foundation of your relationship. Yes. That's the difference. Perfect note to end on. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. If you enjoyed it or were encouraged by it, we would love for you to share it with a friend and then tell your friend to go listen to more episodes because we always love when y'all's friends get brought on board into the Looking for the Middle family. It's always a good time. So we will be back next week with another full length episode. So stay tuned for that. But until then, I'm Kristen. And I'm Bethany. And this is Looking for the Middle. 